Welcome, thank you for stopping by, and I hope you are well, fellow fans of Clash of Clans. It is your host, Galadon, and we are post-spring update. It is time to take a look at some of the top players and their 300 IQ moves as we examine what could be the new meta at Town Hall 13 and what to expect from some of the elite players in the game. So today, we're taking a look at a few specific attacks and specifically moments in these attacks that maybe the average clasher might not think to do. And the first one coming up from Eve Check right here, Tribe Gaming. Check it out as we freeze the frame, the 300 IQ Wizard. Now, many players would use a Rage spell right here because the Archer Queen is facing off against the defending level 70 Barbarian King. The healers are going to need the Rage to keep up with the damage that he is putting out, and the Archer Queen needs to accelerate her damage to get him down as well, but simply one wizard. Notice as we resume the battle, the wizard is going to get in and join in on beating down that Barbarian King. And because the king goes down more quickly, the Archer Queen doesn't ever need to use her ability or a rage spell. She gets through it, and Eve Check is able to continue on with the raid. So it doesn't seem like maybe that significant of a moment. But if you really think about it, four housing space instead of a rage spell is massive. That is huge right there. That's an extra rage spell for Eve Check to use later on in this attack. And of course, he is going to utilize it. Who needs those super wall breakers? Eve Check, do it the old fashioned way, getting the wall breakers in, protected through the rage spell, and opening up that enclosure for the Archer Queen. So it really is the small things that make a big difference, much like using the creator code in Clash of Clans. Because, yes, it maybe is just one person. I'm just using the creator code. I'm only buying the gold pass every month. What does it matter that it sends 5% to Galadon or another creator? If I put his name in here under settings and more settings, well, you know what? You guys together have helped fund literally thousands of dollars in gold pass giveaways, Clash swag giveaways, and charity giving. So thank you guys so much. Those of you that are using creator code Galadon, I do appreciate it. And remember, if you're not going to use creator code Galadon, at least use somebody's creator code, okay? Because Supercell is willing to give that 5% away. Let's go ahead and use it to help support any and all Clash of Clans content creators that are out there trying, grinding, making that daily Clash of Clans content for you, the viewer. Okay, so back into the attack, Eve check, mass hog riders have just annihilated this base. Some awesome fundamentals, some spell timing and placement, and one simple 300 IQ wizard making all of the difference. And I'm telling you, these finesses, nuances, touches, details, they are what differentiate an amateur player from a professional player. Knowing how to save, I mean, that was huge. That is a big savings right there. Did it make or break the rate? I don't know. But over time, you are certainly going to see more victories when you do stuff like that. So let's go into another replay. This from Husnain of Tribe Gaming. And again, we will see a later in the battle 300 IQ move. But if you guys want to come and check out these battles live to see Legend League attacks, no cash clash, and everything else in between, be sure to stop by my Facebook live streams Every single night at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern, I will be live streaming fb.gg slash Gaming. And come on, I know you guys are hashtag staying at home, so hashtag come, hashtag hang out with hashtag me, okay? It's fun, it's free, it's easy, and it's just a good time because you can chat to Galadon, ask me questions, and we will chill together on Facebook every single night. Okay, so yes, this attack is underway, and you'll notice that it is... A Lava Hound, a Lava Loon attack, and it's unusual because you don't see that many these days. What else is unusual about this is wait until you see how long Husnain waits until he drops the Lalo portion of this attack. Notice we're already beyond a third of the way through this base, but that's just the beginning. The Archer Queen value in this attack is beyond insane. She has gotten so far, she's going to head all the way down, and yes, going after the Eagle Artillery next. But he's not done. Check out the rolling super wall breaker right there. Gonna open up the wall. That in and of itself could have been a 300 IQ move. But wait, it comes later. Husnain just about to start the air portion. And you'll notice this base almost 50% destroyed. And not a single air unit dropped. Most of the air defenses are down. One of the inferno towers is down. The eagle is down. The heroes are down. But notice 
a critical portion of this defensive setup is still up, and that is the twin scatter shots, and that is going to become the issue a little bit later in this attack. Now, the Archer Queen, she's taken out half this base, and she's gotten two stars all by her lonesome. Here come the Lava Hounds and the Balloons, the Haste Spells, the Freeze Spells, everything beautifully timed, but watch as the scatter shots, once the Warden ability expires, are going to absolutely pulverize these balloons. It's that second scatter shot did about 50% damage right there. And as they move in, even with haste, they are not going to get there. Here it comes. Oh, the scatter shot wiping out every single balloon. So what's left? What can Husnain do? The scatter shots will not let a balloon get in there. The Archer Queen, she's busy. She's got walls to get through. The minions, they've got no chance either. And here it comes right there. 300 IQ free spell. As it drops, who knew he was saving that? I don't know. Was that on purpose? Did he save that free spell this entire time? Beautifully timed, perfectly timed, and the balloons come in and take out the scatter shot. I don't know. Is that something that you actually would sit down and sketch from the beginning? Hey, I'm going to use this free spell on this last defense on this base, and then I'll get the three star. I don't know. Either way, beautiful use of the last second free spell. Absolute flawless timing, and Husnain picks up the Tribe Gaming three star. So let's move into an attack from, I call him Mido, Mido, not sure. But again, we're going to watch this time for the super wall breaker. These, man, these super troops are really making a huge difference right now. And what, I don't know if you could really plan this ahead. So notice we've got the whole blimp thing coming in. This is, of course, going to be the Yeti bomb. It comes in, it activates the clan castle. It takes out a bunch of defenses in this one section. Now notice that it takes out every building in this section. And that will become absolutely critical in just a few seconds as now the Queen Walk is going to begin. The Lava Hound and all of the other CC troops have been drawn out. She is going to deal with them. Although I thought, man, she was going to go down or use her ability right there. Instead, she recovers the beautifully placed poison spell and she is going to get through that CC and continue on. So great value again from the Yeti Bomb. There goes the Wall Breaker blasting that open, but that's not it. That is where the queen is going to path, but wait, there's more. Notice again where the defending barbarian king is. That enclosure is now empty. What that means is another wall breaker sent in will not head towards those walls. Instead, watch this. Get ready as we pause it. There it is right there. Do you see it? It's the... 300 IQ super wall breaker going to go all the way down. Mido knows exactly where this wall breaker is going past the Archer Queen to the enclosure where the town hall is going to be within range. And I, I, I don't know if he planned this ahead. If he knew the Yeti bomb would completely clear out that enclosure. You'll notice also as we resume the battle, he did have one more. So if there had still been a building in that top left enclosure, maybe he was planning on dropping one there to open it, and then he would use the last one to do what this one did. Not sure. Either way, I love it. I also love the free spell right here, helping keep the Archer Queen up despite the damage coming from the Town Hall and the defending Archer Queen. And now she gets the Town Hall down, moves forward, and the rest of this attack can start. Here they come. The Hog Riders coming in from 12 o'clock, and the funnel from the beginning was beautiful because the Yeti bomb cleared out that enclosure that made a really narrow pathway for these hog riders to follow. Of course, they're pathing after defenses only, and now he's getting max value out of his heal spells. The hog riders are staying in tightly grouped. For the most part, there's a group on the outside as well, but here they come, converging into that last heal spell. Every single hog rider fully soaking up the heals as the Archer Queen somehow is still alive. He has come so close to losing her so many times in this battle, but she doesn't go down. She stays up and gets, again, max value, probably taking out about 40% of this base and the Town Hall. The Hog Riders overrunning, and it's an overkill three-star for Tribe Gaming. So obviously there were a lot of little things that were done right in this raid, along with, of course, spell timing and placement and a beautiful funnel keeping the Archer Queen up. But I loved the 300 IQ super wall breaker that had a long distance dedication for that wall entering to the town hall enclosure. I don't know if I could have seen that if I would have planned that far ahead. Okay, I'll admit, I definitely couldn't have. I definitely wouldn't have. But again, that's the difference between a pro and, well, well, well me. 
Okay, so let's watch the last stack of the day. And this one, I don't have a particular moment that I call the 300 IQ moment, but there are several things that happen during this attack that I think are brilliant, that are really well done. You know, yes, finding those buildings that are unprotected by air targeting defenses, getting max value out of your minions is amazing. But notice the army composition, more specifically, the spell composition. Who brings bat spells at Town Hall 13? This is such a rarity these days. You do not see the bat spell used that much at all. So let's watch as this attack progresses with what starts out as a beautiful funnel, the Warden Walk and the Royal Champion here on the left-hand side working together to create this funnel for what looks like an otherwise relatively normal Yeti smash style attack. So it's great to see the Yetis are still strong even after the update. There you can see the wall breaker gets in, wipes out that wall segment. In comes the poison spell for the clan castle troops and the funnel. Absolutely flawless, nowhere to go, and a beautifully timed and placed jump spell makes sure that everybody heads into the core. But again, what we're watching for is the bat spells. Notice that the warden ability is used early before the town hall goes down. Not really going to become an issue because the healers are all there ready to heal those units back up after the town hall goes down and then check out the stone slammer i love this this is close to a 300 iq stone slammer here because what it is doing is creating a pathway to exit this base and get rid of everything else so that the units didn't get stuck on a wall and then the bat spells coming in from the bottom left they are going to cruise right through because as you can see the scatter shots are all gone and only single targeting infernos remain and no wizard towers so this is again that advanced analysis to be able to pick apart a base like this to say wait a minute i see an opportunity to throw in bat spells because i can get rid of the wizard towers multi-target infernos and scatter shots sure enough beautiful freeze spell right there and it's all over no chance to stop this one the balloons coming in from the back end right there and so many different strategies were used in this attack on what many would say is kind of a dumb base to use in CWL, but can catch players off guard and uh, you never know. So yes, I loved it for all of the different uses of different spells and troop strategies here. So much fun to watch, such an education, and one of the main reasons I love to hang out in Tribe Gaming and spectate every possible CWL attack. And again, there's no reason why you guys don't stop by a live stream and check them out yourselves as well. So that's it. 300 IQ attacks and moves. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you've got some of your own. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end of the episode. You are the true hashtag Gallo fam. I love, think about, it. appreciate every single one of you every single day. So stay inside your house, be kind to people, plan on seeing animals. I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. You say stay inside, but what about essential workers? They're essential. Good point, Peter. We owe them a debt of gratitude. Thank you all.